continue with our December 2018 ACCA FRA financial reporting question number 32. Let's jump into the question. You have opened uh, the question paper for financial reporting FRA September December 2018 sample questions. Now let's go to our question 32 that we're doing about Doug and Co. In the first part, we answered the question, prepare the statement of profit or loss for Doug and Co. for the year ended 30 June 20x8 for 12 marks. In this session, we are going to cover part B and part C. Let's read. Prepare the statement of changes in equity for Doug and Co. for the year ended 30 June 20x8. C. Calculate the basic earnings per share for Doug and Co. for the year ended 30 June 20x8 for three marks. Note, all working should be done to the nearest 1,000. Now, as in the previous session, we have done the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. So today we are going to do the statement of changes in equity and also calculate the earnings per share. Here is our working template. We need to prepare the statement of changes in equity for the year ended 30 June 20 x8. So let's go to the question and take out what is needed. Before you watch this video, I encourage you to go and look for part A of this uh, series so that you will be able to follow along. Now let's extract the figures here. We are given the retained earnings at 1 July 20x7 for 35,400. This is the beginning of the year and we are also given um, equity share capital one dollar shares at 1 July 20 x7 for 12,200. These are the opening balances that we need for our statement of changes in equity. I have gone ahead here and um, prepared the template. So we say balance is at 1 July 20x7. Our equity was 12,200. There was no share premium. The return earnings were 35,400. No right to convert. Then we can have our sum here. Let's go back to the question. We have extracted the opening balances here in our trial balance. Then uh, there was a note of fraud that we were told in note number six. We dealt with this note when we were doing the statement of uh, profit or loss and other comprehensive income. So for today, we'll start off here where you say it has been discovered that the previous financial controller of Dark and Co entered in fraudulent financial reporting. Currently, 2,5 of trade receivables have been deemed to not exist and required to be written off. Of this, 0 0,9 million relates to the year ended 30 June 20XA, that's the current year, with 1,6 million relating to earlier periods. So this 1,6 relating to earlier period is a prior period adjustment. So we'll come here and say prior period adjustment. This was in relation to fraud. Fraud of how much? 1,6 million. So in thousands, we have to deduct 1,600 like that. Then we sum everything. Like that.
Here we get our restated balances. From here, we will quickly go to the profit for the year. Under retained earnings, the profit for the year we have already calculated is 4,806. So we take that profit for the year here. Then we go back to the sum there. Again, we have got this convertible loan that was issued. This convertible loan, we had split the convertible loan of 5 million into 4,820 as a liability and 180 as equity. <coughs> So we we'll say here convertible loan. The right to convert is $180 like that. Then we sum like that. Then we go to the question and see whether there were shares issued. On note number seven, we are told on 1 November 20X7, Duck and Co. issued 1.5 million shares at their full market price of $2.20. The proceeds were credited to the suspense account. So the accountant did an error here. He was supposed to credit the share capital and debit the bank. But the accountant debited the, the, the bank and credited the suspense account, of which is wrong. We need to debit the suspense account and credit the share capital and also the share premium. Let's go to the trial balance. The trial balance we are given equity share capital at $1 per share. So here the full market price is $2.20 of which the dollar goes to the share capital and the dollar twenty should go to the share premium account. Now let's let's um include the issue of shares. It's 1.5 million, so it's 1,500, multiplied by $2.20, like that. Then how much goes to capital? It's 1,500, multiplied by the nominal value of a dollar. We get that. Under share premium, we say 1,500, multiplied by, if we say $2.20 minus dollar, it will remain with dollar twenty multiplied by dollar twenty like that. Then we sum up like that. Then we can also now sum up our statement of changes in equity like that. We have completed our statement of changes in equity. <coughs> We have earned ourselves five marks. Now we are to calculate the basic earnings per share. The basic earnings per share, before we calculate the basic earnings per share, we need to familiarize with our formula. The formula for basic earnings per share is the <coughs> retained earnings attributable to the owners of the parent divided by the number of shares or the weighted average number of shares. Now at the beginning, here it's at here is balance as at 30 June 20 X8. Now in 1 July, twenty X7. How much were the shares? The shares at the beginning of the year were 12,200. Then we are told in this note that 1 November 20x7, Duck and Co. issued shares at full market price. So if the shares are issued at full market price, we do not we are not required to go and uh, multiply the existing shares with a factor 
that is the theoretical x raised pi divided by the cam pi. We are not uh, required to do that. We are only required to go and multiply with a, a fraction where we are given the right issue. But in this question, there is no right issue. So we are not going to multiply these, uh, these shares at the beginning of the year with a factor. So say these shares at the beginning of the year, how many months did we have these shares? We clearly we had these shares 12 out of 12. So if we multiply by 12 and divide by 12, we get that. Then again, another shares were issued 1 November 20x7. How much was, were these shares issued? They were 1,500. Then these shares, 1,500 nominal. How many months now? We have to wait. How many months? So this 1,500 is November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. It's for eight months. So we come into our question here and say eight out of 12. So we say 1,500 multiplied by 8 divided by 12, like that. We get 1,000, then we sum the shares. We get our one-offs, our weighted average number of shares is 13,200. Now, to calculate the, <coughs> the earnings per share, we, we have to say earnings, of which we have the earnings here, earnings divided by the number of shares. So, we we'll say our earnings here divided by the number of shares. The number of shares is 13,200. We get our earnings per share is $0.36. This is what we were asked to do for three months. Please go and watch the video for part A. Then we, you could, then you, we have to continue now with this video so that you get the full picture. Thank you for watching. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to do so. Thank you.